नमस्कार वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एडिटोरियल आई बिलीव इंफॉर्मेशन इज एम्पावरिंग इंफॉर्मेशन एम्पावर यू विद द एबिलिटी टू टेक द राइट डिसीजन इंफॉर्मेशन एम्पावर यू टू थ्रो अवे न्यूज थ्रो अवे नरेटिव दैट कम्स टू यू विच आर फेक इंफॉर्मेशन हेल्प यू विद दैट my effort uh, through editorial has always been to provide you that information information which at times may be very interesting like today's topic it's interesting at times some information may be very boring but still it's important information information about our farmers information about irrigation important in- information it may be boring but all the same i try to get those information and put it up in front of you and my series continue today i want to talk about uniform civil code i want to talk about uniform civil code for two reasons a there are a lot of misconception about uniform civil code and b uniform civil code may be a poll proposition for bharatiya janata party in 2024 so politically speaking and socially speaking uniform civil code is going to play a very important role now i am going to read a lot of uh, stuff today in my editorial because i don't want to go wrong uh, in any of the things that i tell you but let us understand uniform civil code let's get right into the show okay so i am going to go very clinically today theek hai na i'll go very clinically today i will talk about the definition of uniform civil code i will talk about uh, how our constituent assembly uh, saw uniform civil code how i will talk about why people opposed uniform civil code i will also talk about what are the advantages of uniform civil code i will also talk about what are the disadvantages of uniform civil code i will talk about what the government feels about uniform civil code i will also sp- talk to you about what congress feels about the uniform civil code what i would request you to do is i would want to know what you feel about uniform civil code after you listen to this uh, this editorial i want your views because the most important views are your views because if i get your views i can form an opinion i can form a consensus on what the country is thinking or at least what my viewers are thinking which is what is important to me to be very honest with you i want to know what you think about the subject so please do spare that time to write your comments down like i always say even if you are not used to writing on social media and all that please do write your comment down this is important your voice has to be heard this is important so uh let me begin uh, this editorial the first is let us define uniform civil code now the uniform civil code calls for the formulation of one law for india which could be applicable to all religious communities in matters such as marriage divorce inheritance adoption the code comes under article 44 of the constitution which lays down the state which lays down that the state shall endeavor to secure uniform civil code for the citizens throughout the territory of india now uniform civil code let us understand very clearly uniform civil code is only bother about adoption divorce inheritance marriage marriage divorce inheritance adoption for this is where uniform civil code is which means that in certain religion you can marry more than one person in certain religion you cannot marry more than one person in certain religion there is a process of adoption in certain religion there is a process of inheritance in certain religion the process of inheritance is different so what uniform civil code says nay the process should be the same that's what uniform civil code says now the point i mean i am i am i am kind of emph- emphasizing here is uh, to understand that uniform civil code doesn't mean that in india we have different codes different criminal or different laws for different people a criminal law in india is the same whichever caste creed community you come from if you murder if you rob if you fraud if you if you manipulate if you kidnap if you threaten 
the law is the same for all of us. So uniform civil code has nothing to do with that. So this narrative where people say that, Are, ye kaisa ho sakta hai? Ek aadmi ko, ek law, dusra aadmi ko. No, 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 no. It is only for these four things which I told you. Adoption, divorce, inheritance and uh, marriage. Four laws. Bas, isme hi hai. Hai na? So that's the definition of uniform civil code. Now, <clears throat> what did the constituent assembly think about uniform civil code? Now, according to article 44, in part 4, the constitution says that the state shall endeavor to secure citizen a uniform civil code throughout the territory of India. While there is no draft or model document yet for the uniform civil code, the framers of the constitution envisioned that it would be uniform set of laws that would replace distinctive personal laws of each religion with regard to matter of, like I told you, marriage, divorce, adoption and inheritance. Part 4 of the constitution outlines the directive principle of state policy which will not be enforceable or justiciable in a court of law are fundamental to the country's governance. So the constituent assembly, to be very honest with you, was very keen to enforce the uniform civil code. In fact, the constituent assembly said, like I told you, shall endeavor to secure for the citizens a uniform civil code throughout the territory of India. This was the mind of our framers of the constitution. Now, they faced some oppositions. Now, let me tell you what all the oppositions they faced. The clause of uniform civil code generated substantial debate in the constituent assembly about whether it should be included as a fundamental right or a directive principle. The matter had to be settled by vote with a majority of 5 is to 4, wherein the subcommittee of the fundamental uh, rights headed by Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel decided that securing a UCC, that is Uniform Civil Code, was not within the scope of fundamental rights. So there was a lot of debates, lot of debates. In fact, member of the assembly took starkly contrasting stance on UCC. Some also felt that India was too diverse a country for the UCC. Member Naziruddin Ahmad from Bengal argued that the central civil law in all communities were inseparable connected with religious belief and practices. He felt that the UCC would come in the way of Article 19 of the draft constitution, now Article 25, which guarantees the right to freedom of religion subject to public order, morality, health. While he was not against the idea of a uniform civil law, he argued that the time for that has not yet come, adding that the process has to be gradual and not without consent and the, of the concerned communities. Take care. It is very simple. See, Article 25 says what? Article 25 says you can practice your religion. Now, if you say that you can practice your religion, that means you can do everything what your religion says. Now, the argument in the constituent assembly was and uh, like uh, uh, I said member Naziruddin Ahmed said this listen if you are going to impose a uniform civil code which means that you know regardless of what whichever religion you have you have to follow uh, x amount of uh, rules which are uniform to every religion that goes against article those days article 14 now article 25 he said that goes against article 25 which gives you the right to practice your religion so it is contradictory isn't it so this was uh, the, the, the position then. Now, let me also tell you, the member didn't say that we should therefore not implement Uniform Civil Code. What the member said is we should implement Uniform Civil Code, but it should be a gradual process. And very clearly a process where you have consent of every community. Then you implement Uniform Civil Code. So this was the view of the Constituent Assembly. Once again, the Constituent Assembly was keen to endeavor to put the Uniform Civil Code into place. The, there was a lot of resistance and one of the 
the voices that came through was that listen uniform civil code karo lekin ab nahi it has to be done gradually it has to be done slowly and with the consent of the minority also like i told you the it contradicts with article 25 so one has to be very wary of that so this is where as far as history is concerned theek hai chalo history ko side mein rakhte hain now let us get into why people support uniform civil code the first thing is people say it will integrate india it will integrate india is so that you know there is no different laws for different people no matter what marriage inheritance divorce and adoption these are four very fundamental processes in a citizen's life so the state says listen you know what it can't be that you know different have, people have different laws different uh, people can uh, way, will, will work the way they different people can do whatever they want to is because that then the civil society of india will have different laws isn't it that was the argument number 1 it is it will integrate india if you put uniform civil code argument number 2 in support of ucc was that with the help of reducing vote bank politics it will reduce vote bank politics you see integration will be more therefore vote bank politics will be lesser since your basic every law is same people will be more integrated will be more closer will be more together so the vote bank politics will go that was the point number 2 personal law are laws are a loophole by allowing personal law we have constituted an alternative judicial system which operates thousands of years old values the uniform civil code could change that it has its own loophole that is the argument as far as support of uniform civil code is concerned now more sign of modern progressive nation uniform civil code is a sign of modern progressive nation one nation one law because end of the day old laws can drag the nation back whereas if your laws are updated and according to the society at that point in time it helps the progress of the nation that's the point they made it will give more rights to women now divorce Uh, triple talaq we know of all that so another pro uh, argument is it will give more rights to women all indians should be treated the same we spoke about that it promotes real secularism it promotes real secularism because har ek ke liye law same hai so you don't have to go to personal law board you don't have to uh, look at another law book for any settlement of any uh, issues whether it is personal or whether it is criminal so it will be real secular for hindu for muslim for sikh for anybody it will be the same law so it will be real secular change has been the law of nature i spoke to you about that we have to be dynamic law has to change law has to be for today now whether that is practiced in all the other laws one doesn't know because uh, 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 there are a lot of laws which are still draconian and we still practice it but theek hai the understanding is law has to change it has to be dynamic which we spoke about also many provision of specific person law are in violation of human rights so that's another thought that you know there are a lot of laws in personal laws which may violate human rights so that's another point that was made article 25 and article 26 guarantees the freedom of religion and uniform civil code is not opposed to secularism so the counter question to what uh, the mp raised in uh, the constituent assembly is see article 25 article 26 gives you the right to practice your religion but uniform civil code doesn't stop you from practicing your religion it is just making everything same for everybody so that's the argument here that's a counter argument here that people who support uh, the uniform civil code says the codification and unification of the personal law will produce more coherent and legal system this will reduce the existing confusion uh, same thing i mean most of these points are same they say that listen you know what so you don't have to have different laws for different people it will it will stop confusion in the in the legal system ke bhai ye हिंदू लॉ है तो यह अलग है ये मुस्लिम लॉ है तो यह अलग है ये पारसी लॉ है तो यह अलग है दैट कंफ्यूजन विल बी विल बी विल बी टेकन अवे सो दीज आर द थिंग्स दैट पीपल से फॉर यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड नाउ लेट अस लुक एट पीपल हु टॉक अगेंस्ट यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड एंड व्हाट इज देयर व्यू ऑन दिस नाउ द फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट व्यू इज डिफिकल्ट ड्यू टू इंडिया डाइवर्सिटी वी आर अ डाइवर्स नेशन everybody has their right to practice our own laws 
In fact, we will be, possibly we are the only nation that has given a island a complete free hand. There is no law applicable in that island. Do you know that? That island is called Centelese. There is no Indian law applicable there. So there anybody can murder anybody, kill anybody, eat anything, drink, drink anything, whatever the law is, how marriage the way they want, divorce the way they want, have children the way they want, adopt the way they want. We are one nation who have given that right to that, uh, that state. And we, unlike Britishers and all who wanted to kind of get in there and, you know, kind of create a... We as Indian government, we said, figure it. Let, if they want to live their own way, let them live their own life. We have actually cottoned off that, uh, that island. The point is, the point that I am trying to make is we are a diverse country, diverse religion, diverse cultures. So we have our own way of doing things. So uniform civil code may harm that. That's the point number one. Interference with state in personal matters. Achha. Now this is a larger subject. Larger subject. Till where will you allow the state to interfere? Till the doorstep of your house, after which it is your own personal life? Is that where the state can come in? Can the state enter your relationships, which is your marriage, your bonding with your child, your adoption of a child? Can the state interfere there? Can the state interfere in who you want to give, whether you give a son, whether you give a daughter? Can the state interfere? This is a question that needs debate. Because to a certain extent, yeah, I mean, somewhat, some people will say yes. Giving a son and not giving the daughter is wrong. That is That was pra a practice at one point in time. Maybe having multiple spouses is wrong, is what someone would say. So who decides and how much can the state decide for you? Where does the state end and the personal individual freedom begins? That's the question that uh, they ask. People from different communities are not willing to adopt uh, the secular laws separated from personal laws. They are not willing to accept. Some people say, Mereko nahi karne ka. Now, how do we tackle that? Remember Constituent Assembly? They had said that, you know, take time, do it. Take your time, but take consent from the community. Take consent from the community. The people say communities are not willing to consent even now. That's another point. Every religion will say that it has the right to decide various issues on matter of personal law. Like I told you. So more or less, it is the same thing. Religion does not want. Broadly, it is like this. Broadly, it is like this. One set of people say that, listen, you know, it will integrate the country. Uniform civil code is not to divide the people. Uniform civil code will unite the people. A lot of people say that constituent assembly may bula tha ki uniform civil code should be endeavored. We should endeavor to put uniform civil code. Our uh, founding fathers, the, the framers of our constituent, uh, constitution had also said that we should endeavor that. There was argument, there was debate, there was a, a lot of uh, 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 objections to it. But end of the day, even the objections were concluded that, listen, we will do it, not now, at a future date, but with the consent of the community. So that is how it ended. That is what uh, uh, one set of people will say. The second set of people will say, Bhai, kitna karoge, yaar? it is my life. I follow my religion. My religion says I can do this when I get married. I can do this for adoption i can i can i can give my inheritance to x i can i don't need to give my inheritance to y how much will you interfere in my life criminal law is the same if i commit a crime against anybody it is the same it is the same for a hindu it is same for the muslim but how much should i give my son or my daughter is my choice no some people will say that some people will say that listen you know what you are going against again article 25 why? Because are, it is my religious freedom. You gave me that religious freedom. The constitution gave me that religious freedom. Now you are saying that religious freedom to have, but yeah, you have religion ka follow nahi karne ka. How is that fair? So these are the two views, uh, very clear views. Okay. Now um, <clears throat> let's talk five minutes on judiciary. How does the judicial system see this? Okay. The Supreme Court in various judgment has called for the implementation of UCC. The Supreme Court has been kind of pro uniform civil code. In its Mohammed Ahmed Khan versus Shah Banu Begum judgment in 1985, where a divorced Muslim woman demanded maintenance from her husband, 
the apex court while deciding whether to give uh, prevalence to the crpc to the or to the muslim law board called for the implementation of uniform civil code shabano case is famous so everybody knows about it okay where the supreme court said no crpc versus uh, uh, personal law board they said let's go for a uniform civil court let us have one law for everybody so supreme court has been traditionally has been for uh, uniform civil code now what is the law commission saying now the modi government in 2016 requested the law commission of india to determine how to form a code in the presence of thousands of personal laws in the country in 2018 the law commission submitted a 185 page consultation paper on the reform of family law the paper stated that a unified nation did not necessarily need uniformity adding the secularism could not contradict the plurality prevalent in the country in fact the term secularism had meaning only if it assured the expression of any form of difference the commission noted now the law commission who gave a 185 page report they were not for uniform civil code very interestingly very interestingly they said see listen you see uniformity will only prevail if there is plurality you can't compromise on plurality to maintain uniformity because then the concept of secularism is gone then the concept of unity is gone because the moment you are compromising on plurality you are forcing plurality to say no you can't do this even if you if, if your religion says so you have to do this because the law says so that end secularism this is what the 185 pages law commission said in fact while saying that uniform civil code is neither necessary nor desirable at this stage the report recommended discriminatory practices prejudice and stereotypes with a particular religion and its personal laws should be studied and amended the commission suggested certain measures in marriage divorce that should be uniformly accepted in the personal law boards and of all religion some of these amendments included fixing of marriageable age of the boys and girls at 18 years so they are married as equals making adultery a ground for divorce for men and women and simplifying the divorce procedure it also called for the abolition of the hindu undivided family as tax exempted entity so very interestingly this commission this commission said that listen you know what other than getting a uniform civil code they said it is not the right time even yet other than getting human uh, uniform civil codes let's look at personal laws in these personal communities Uh, uh, a certain community let's look at personal laws and let us uniform certain laws like you can only marry after the age of 18 if you marry before the age of 18 for girls on 21 before for guys you it is illegal the marriage is illegal it also spoke about you know you can't have a, a huf hindu undivided family as a tax exempted entity so he said they said listen don't look at the law in totality ek din mein chalo sab uniform done aisa mat karo you take each community you look at specifically study those communities study those laws understand the flaws try to correct those flaws make divorce processes easier make ensure that uh, you know divorce process processes uh, the the wife or the person who is who is uh, dependent dependent is taken care of you know take care of all of that take care of those those issues other than changing the law this was what the law commission said very interesting now let us take the government stance let us understand what the government said the government has been very clear you see it has been a long time promise uh, of uh, bharatiya janata party to bring about the uniform civil code so that is there so the government believes in uniform civil code that being said kiran rijuju the then uh, justice minister he had made a statement in the in the house that listen you know what we have not put up a panel and all at the moment to uh, bring about uniform civil code uh, but as yeah as a government i i think they always believed bharatiya janata party always believed that it has to be there has to be one man and one law this is government stance what congress and the opposition is saying is congress and the opposition saying that listen you know what 21st uh, commission 
21st law commission i told you you go individually check what are the flaws check what are the loopholes in personal law let us try and understand personal law let us try and understand the loopholes let us try and correct it let us first bring about that change why aren't we doing it that is what the opposition says the 22nd law commission of india decided to solicit views and ideas of the public at large and recognized religious organization about the uniform civil code so this is what uniform civil code is i hope i have narrated the concept to you and now like i told you i request you please write your comments down write talk to me tell me your comments give me your views give me your views on uniform civil code give me what you think tell me what you think about uniform civil code and uh, i will be waiting for that i will really be waiting for that until i see you next time that's tomorrow at 10 namaskar